Welcome back to Beer with Nat. On every episode, I share a beer and a chat with people who do what they love for a living. They work in the beer industry. Today's guest is Natasha Wolf, London sales manager for Manchester's Beatniks Republic Brewery. Natasha talks us through her career in beer to date, what interested her in sales, and how each of her previous roles has helped provide her with the skills she needs for the job she's in today. We also talk about how she got into beer in the first place, how she's welcoming other women into beer as the co-founder of the Crafty Beer Girls, and of course, what she enjoys most about being a part of the beer industry. Here she is. So I brought Tropic Fiesta DDH. It's our session IPA. I thought it was fitting because it's got Fiesta. The idea is it's easy drinking throughout the day and we're about to go to London Craft Beer Festival. So it's a perfect pre-festival beer. Oh, that's really nice. (laughs) It's just easy, lots of nice fruity flavors, a little bit of bitterness in there too. Not too much, kind of a bit more like a juice to get our day started. Mm. A lightly boozy juice. It's really nice because um, we actually had this pouring at Great British Beer Festival and we sent a few casks of this down. Yeah, so it's two times this week I get to celebrate this beer. Yeah, and so you'll have it on cask and then canned as well. Yeah. Seeing both versions, that's really cool. All right, so you've said we a few times, but I suppose you should say who you work for, who we is. Um, So yeah, I work for Beatniks Republic. I'm the London sales and account manager, but I do do a little bit of the southeast sales as well. It was a new role starting about... Eight months ago, Mm -hmm. uh, they hired me to sort of be the feet on the ground in London for the company. And yeah, it's been going really, really well. We're a small brewery, but growing. We're based up in Manchester. Breweries in the Green Quarter, and we've got a really lovely bar in the Northern Quarter. Yeah, I've seen some photos. It looks really cool. Yeah, that's been that's that's in its second year now. The bar, the brewery is about a couple years old, a bit older than that. It was founded in London, actually. Paul Greetham, our owner, founder, he was cuckoo brewing few years ago down in southeast London and then he moved to a permanent residence up in Manchester so oh, then we got the brewery a few like in the railway arches yep um, we've now just bought a few more arches and gone through a massive expansion and uh, yeah it's, it's really exciting times for us yeah so it seems when I was kind of getting ready to chat to you it seems like there's lots of fun stuff going on there so let's talk a little bit more about you and your day today then we'll go into the brewery and then we'll go into some of the other things that you do in the beer world too sounds um, good so what does your day to day look like as a sales and account manager well so the structure is mainly Mondays on my key sales days so I'll send out availability list and also I might do that on Friday but Monday's a key day so I let people know what's available and then call up people, process sales. Between Tuesday and Thursday, I'll do some visits around town, uh, visit accounts, visit new customers, do like sample drops, visit the warehouse, um, because we're basically running operations as if we have space here. So we deliver every day. Oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, okay. we ship down pallets of fresh beer, people order, and then we, we get to ship the beer out. So it doesn't all come down from Manchester on the daily. You've got a little London yeah. hub as well for your London exactly. sales. Oh, that so, makes things much um, easier. Yeah, so people can have just a minimum order of two kegs or four cases. So they don't need to buy like massive amounts. It's as if we're like currying beer around yeah. quite normally. So Tuesdays to Thursdays, I'll tend to get out a couple of days. And then Friday mornings tend to be reconciling accounts and admin or... I might mix things up to get out again on Friday afternoon because places are a bit quieter Mm. in terms of managers aren't checking their emails so much so I can catch them before they start the weekend. Yeah, that's Um, a good point. So yeah, it's it's really, really nice. I get a lot of freedom into how I structure my time because it's just me. It can be really busy, but I love it so... And how much of your time is spent trying to find new accounts versus maintaining the accounts you already have and checking in with people and telling them about new beers? I mean, I think it's because we're a newish brewery down this way. It's it's basically been for the first few months building up my report as Natasha from Beatniks Mm because I think people knew me as you know from other breweries Mm -hmm. as I or as different personality say. Mm. Um, So it's sort of putting. The two and two together like hey it's Natasha from Beatniks Republic and then also this is what we're doing yeah um we've got a really great core cool range really well structured so then sort of cementing you know getting people to know what to look for as our core beers mm-hmm. obviously getting pallets down means that sometimes I don't always have the same stock as Manchester just because it, it's out there first uh, but we've worked it so that I tend to get everything synchronized and release at the same time now right with the world of social media if it gets shouted about up there you want to yeah. make sure people can get it down here too yeah so our marketing guys get both mine and rosie's my um so our counterpart in the north yes yeah. but she yeah she's like queen of the north and i'm like <laughs> 
Queen Princess of the South. Of the South. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, um, I feel like she's because she's my line manager. I definitely feel she's queen, but she's great. And then so she'll she'll release stuff and like check back with me, say like things are selling fast. Do you want any of this? I'm like yes, please. Okay, good. Yeah. So Although we can see the like brew like the brew schedule, it does get like things can go so quickly. Mm-hmm. Like any special releases, we've got a peach iced tea pale that Ooh. we brewed with queer brewing okay oh that's yeah, exciting it's called 1969 okay. and that that's already like going like no one's business yeah so I well think Lily's doing a great job with the project we yeah. have already spoke to her on the podcast a few episodes yeah, ago so I, that's cool I to think... know that you guys have done a collaboration and how do you decide what kind of bar or pub or bottle shop is the right fit I think Beatniks Republic the na- part the Republic part is very much that we want to make beer accessible uh, to everyone mm-hmm. uh, we make beer for everyone to enjoy we keep the price point accessible as well. Obviously, hops are expensive, but we do try not to inflate the prices of our beer because you know there's a hype around a style or something like that. Mm. Also, part of the reason we've got the 440 mil cans. So it's all about accessibility, and I think we're not snooty about where the beer goes, mm-hmm. just as long as we know that the beer is you know going to be well cared for. There's no point being everywhere. And then having beer going out of date because people don't know what they're doing mm-hmm. or, um, you know, not rotating stock, things like that. So it's sort of going to places I know I would go and buy beer from. That, that That's basically my rule of thumb. Yeah. Um, and keeping that accessibility in mind is really important as well. Yeah. I mean, I love craft beer and it's become part, so, so much part of my daily life. And I think that that accessibility is really, really key because mm-hmm. it'd be a shame to know that someone, I don't know, like, anyone couldn't afford it and it's about introducing people to interesting flavors perhaps yeah. that might get them to check out more beers in the future yeah, and i think like just also like if something looks a little bit daunting or like pretentious people shy away from that when they're new to the industry mm-hmm. and it's if there's not someone at the point of dispense or at the retail end of things to educate you know new customers then it's up to sort of the product to kind of sell itself yeah so keeping it you know clean looking eye catching that sort of stuff as well as being very obvious what the beers are uh, what the styles are on the cans or the pump clips yeah i do really like the look of Thank the you. packaging for being i will let like, our designer know yeah it's kind of this it reminds me of like a vintage poster or something and it's got yeah. this interesting ombre look of the change of colors on many of the different brands yeah, so so yeah they kind of make you feel like you're on holiday when you look at them they are quite they're, they're definitely quite bright and punchy and i, I do like our, our designs a lot having always been you know the london beer scene there's so much good branding out mm-hmm. there one has to be careful not to have like smoke and mirrors have the product not be as good as the mark like Mm -hmm. what's on the label but I definitely feel we've got the two on a very good level on par yeah Yeah. I'll come back to what you've done in beer before as you've been in beer for a little while now but I just wanted to talk about what skills you think are most helpful or most useful in your current role because I know you've worked in bars you've worked in marketing and events and communication so is it the role you're in now using different aspects of all of those roles yeah, definitely. So when it comes to, I've, well, I never thought I'd be a salesperson for a really long while. I was thinking I was more into events and sort of communicating beer because I love talking about beer. Mm-hmm. I didn't like the ruthlessness of salespeople, mm. but having witnessed so many different personalities and sales personalities, I realized that you could do it your way. Mm. And it's really refreshing the craft beer industry or modern day beer industry. People aren't so pigeonholed as, you know, like, in more sort of commercial jobs or you know high street employment roles and I find that I can use all aspects so when I'm a bit unsure about a customer I basically go in as a punter and sit and have a beer and see how their staff deal with the beers and in that sense I can you know analyze through first-hand experience whether it's a worthwhile uh, venue to get in if there's any issues or like we don't we don't use key kegs very much but sometimes people aren't down south aren't so used to especially if they're like craft beer bars they're not so used to like sankey couplers for example my knowledge of that from dispense and working in bars go and help them like don't do any installs but pop over help them out troubleshoot any issues hopefully that's not the case for too many people because they should know how to manage their sellers but you know it just makes you feel a little bit more confident if you can pop over and be like hey i can i can help you with this Mm -hmm. and then people trust you as well because you 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 know what you're talking about. You're not just, you know, selling to get those numbers, Mm -hmm. reach those targets. And then just talking about beer, so I get to do some events. I haven't done too many because it has been very much focused on 
building up our sales uh, customer base but I've been doing some cool events and um, that's basically talking about the beer, the brand, um, what we're doing, our future projects and that's again from my history of working in the industry has been really really good. Yeah I did want to ask that it seems like you are doing quite a few events and I wasn't sure if that was maybe to help you be associated as the face of the brand here in London as the presence in London is a bit newer. I don't know like I definitely one of the things that were discussed when they were like interviewing me was could I would I be up for doing some events and and you're like I got years of experience in that (laughs) yeah there there is that but it's also like I'm really excited to be focused as a salesperson like I have been doing sales for a while Mm -hmm. before but it wasn't an actual it wasn't like a partly official sort of thing was more like acting up but now it's like my focus and I really wanted it want it to be my focus okay. um but it's great to I think sales and events go hand in hand mm-hmm. um so but it's you about, want the sales to come first in yeah in I mean I think that's you could get as many ev- events as you want once you know you've got a stable like sales base and customer mm-hmm. base because the competition's so fierce and if you blink you can miss mm. or get missed so it's just all about being everywhere constantly being out and about Mm -hmm. socializing um lots of beer (laughs) lots of water yes exactly (laughs) balance Um, lots of coffee and what led you to the sales role in particular why did you want to pursue that one i just felt like i'd I'd done so much and kind of bar work yeah it felt like the next thing it just felt really really obvious but also sort of natural Mm -hmm. and i was pinpointed like to the job application and luckily I knew some of the people working at the brewery so I sort of could gauge the feel of and knew the, you could bring the company yeah and I knew the, the personalities role. some of the personalities there and um, when I went up for my interview day it it just felt it just felt really right having worked for a brewery for about four-ish years having been with that brewery from the beginning and growing with it mm-hmm. Um, I was very nervous that the next job I would find, I'd feel very sort of like out of place or having to scrabble to find my feet maybe. I don't know. I had a bit of a confidence issue, I mm. guess, but felt really, really good. Everything felt really positive and it has been that way since the beginning. So it's, yeah, I'm really happy and really lucky. Good. And have there been sort of any unexpected challenges coming into the sales role or you knew it was a different role than you were used to, but you were ready to, to meet those challenges? It's it's more the London sales, like demographic, like, oh, I mean, customer demographic. I think um, people used to get permanent lines. Mm-hmm. Now they get permanent brewery lines, not the same beer. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, making sure we have enough stock. It's more those small newest nuances, which... We've dealt with with you know increasing capacity um, and doubling um, our production hopefully. Um, so it's things like that, but it's not too unexpected. It was always going to be a challenge we would have to face as we grew. Yeah. Um, and as there were went from one salesperson to two, but not much more stock to go between. Okay. So. So um, it's just that supply and demand thing, which isn't necessarily yeah. in your hands. But no. The brewery is expanding. But it's, it's a good problem to have. So, exactly. Um, any. Any, any challenges that we face, they're, they're all ones that we're prepared for. I mean, we knew they were coming. Yep. It's just about when they've hit us. It's like, okay, cool. Now this is what time. we need to do. Yep. And it's really great. We're a small team, small but mighty. And there's the c- communication across, even though I'm down south. I was just going to ask that. Are yep. there any challenges being based here on your own while the brewery's up in Manchester? Or are you good at communicating that you don't feel Yeah, so really good. We've got like myself and Rosie chat several times a day. So that's, that's great. And we share one sales email. Okay. And book. So you so both see what's going We're both in. across what each other's doing, sort of mm-hmm. like through the periphery anyway. And then we've got the brewers, two brewers, but we've got a group for all, everyone. So we know what's being packaged. We, we have access to the brew schedule. And you know what's coming next. And, yeah. Okay, and then um, everything's like synced. So you yeah. know what the beers taste like from the FB and finished product tasting notes. So mm-hmm. it's really, really good. Yeah, that's been pretty flawless. So and I'm really happy. Tell me more about the expansion plans. So whole new um, kit has come in? Yeah, so we used to have... Um, it wasn't that dinky, but we'd have to double brew to oh, wow, have a single. Okay. So um, that's long that, days and yeah, using that, that kit often. Yeah, it, it def, it's, it's definitely um, took its toll on the brewers. But they're like really hardworking. But we've now got a 15 hectolitre brew house, which is nine UK barrels. 
and we're hopefully doubling capacity with what we've just bought in. So we've got six 30 hectoliter effies. Okay. And that's like, that's new. So they're bigger boys. And effies and, are fermentation vessels. Yes. So we're holding the beer as it's fermenting and finishing and maturing. Yeah. Because yeah. um, we were canning, and we are canning, but what we found is like putting the beer into a conditioning tank for canning would take up space mm -hmm. for any other sort of packaging. So mm -hmm. it kind of set us back a whole week in packaging. Okay. But now we've got, We've got more FBs and we've got more space. Um, we'll have a bit more beer. Yeah, um, that's fantastic. More, more to sell and just, yeah, so, less Tetris and sort of who's getting what in terms of Rosie and myself. But, yeah. yeah, more for everybody. Yeah. And you guys to sell and for your customers to enjoy. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's really good. Okay, yeah. so we're going to go back to your beginnings in beer. I think your first role in beer was at BrewDog, but I might be wrong, so you can correct me there. Bar work is how you got your start in the industry. Yeah. Then you moved to Weird Beard and did sort of a jack-of-all-trades role doing sales and events, well, starting with events and communications, then marketing and sales. Um, so talk me through all of that, and then tell me how you then made the transition to Beatnix, where you are now. Okay, so I actually was doing some part-time work at a Fuller's Gastro Pub in Hampstead called The Hollybush. Okay. And we had like lots of nice chefs come in and we had to sort out the ales that were on and do like pairings. Really cask I was beer there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, cask and keg. Full is casks on only. Mm -hmm. Or a couple of specials. But yeah, there were really nice cask ales on. And that's when I started getting into beer. Okay. And I would do a lot of the function room um, parties and oh, wow. Christmas so your parties. events experience goes way, way back. Yeah, okay. so I've had a sort of a supervisory role there. Mm -hmm. I did my salmonship training through Fuller's and yeah, it was a, seems like so long ago, but yeah, beer and food pairings, basically, that's what I was doing as part of my supervisory events role there. But I was basically like floor, like a floor supervisor, floor manager. Yeah. And then I went full time there, but I started doing some part time work at Brewdog because I got into craft beer. And then I moved to that entirely and I did a load of events there in terms of tap takeovers and beer schools and beer and cheese pairings. Just but loads and loads of events. I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. And, and got what, a taste what did for you it. enjoy most about those? Just communicating with people about beer and helping yeah. to get them passionate about it too. So yeah, that that's basically it. I, I didn't realise I liked beer at mm. all until I, you know, realised that ale is also beer and not just lager. And I was yeah. like, oh my gosh, I've been so close-minded and oh, this is like a whole new world. I got really passionate and it just felt really easy to, for it to become part of my life and mm -hmm. work that I actually enjoyed um, because it uses so many... Like your day-to-day -day uses so many different elements of my, my personalities. I feel like you, you have to be communicative and then a little bit sort of like have some creative license in how you structure a tasting with, say, like a hen party versus a group of home brewers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really, really like it is in interesting and engaging and exciting all rolled into one. And then um, with Brewdog, I just felt it was time to go from bar to brewery when I got offered the events and communications role at weird beard and that was pretty early on in their beginnings and worked with them for about just just over four years um before moving on to beatniks mm -hmm. republic and yeah taking on more as the brewery grew taking on more responsibility and really yeah. getting yourself well known across the industry as well which has yeah, probably that, helped you yeah know, it's the definitely reputation you have now it, i think i've been lucky because i mean it's almost weird like it goes full as brew dog weird beard beatniks republic they're all sort of like every year it's a newer brewery, mm. a newer, younger brewery, but it's always been exciting. And um, it's, it's like, I look back and think, oh, I've le I can't, can't believe I learned that. I can like, you know, reflect back and be like, oh, I'm doing similar things. Yeah. But this is what I've also learned along the way. And it's, it's really nice to reflect back and um, I guess know how far I've come. And have you enjoyed the transition from being, you know, behind the pub or bar and out into the brewery side? I'm sure it helps you in the sales role because then you understand, okay, what's important at the point of service? Yeah. How are they, you know, calculating their margins and are we the right price point and things like that? Yeah, so the best, like, it's easy when people, like, everyone asks for discounts. Well, most people ask for discounts. And when people start, you know, mentioning the D word, I'm just like doing the calculations and thinking like, well, I know their GPs are this. And I'm like, that's ri ridiculous. And... It really helps because I know what it was, you know, I knew what GPs were when I worked in a bar and did some sort of, you know, bar admin. So it's like, that's really helpful. So you know what is feasible and what is viable for the brewery, as well as in terms of, 
your customers and yeah just being sort of a bit more knowledgeable I guess Mm -hmm. on every on every um, understanding the whole industry and how it all works together yeah um, it's, I think that's quite important as a woman as well. I just feel like it gives me the knowledge and the confidence to know that when someone's trying to, well, thinks that I don't understand, I know that I do. Yeah. And I can quietly think, yep, that's true. And I'm aware of that. And then can deal with it that way because I know, I know You've the, got the experience. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But before you came to beer, you were in a very different world and we've very bonded much. over this yeah. before. Uh, your background's in biochemistry. Yeah, so I did a BSc in biochemistry at Birmingham Uni, and then I left uni with my degree and moved to Heidelberg to work at Max Planck as a developmental neurobiologist. That is incredible, (laughs) oh my goodness. Yeah, I mean, it was, I went into a pet shop recently in Hackney, and I was looking for the rainbow fish, because I can tell which ones are male and female. Is that what you did research yeah. on when you were there? Yeah, okay. so they were my model. And I got really excited. I was like, come see this. And my partner was like, oh, okay. from the past. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, that one's a female and that one's a male. So what interested you in that and what was your plan then um, when you were in uni and right after uni? I mean, I've always loved science. I wanted to be a doctor and then I didn't get into med school. And then I just felt human biology or clinical biology was not what I liked. I really like chemistry. Mm -hmm. So I ended up doing biochemistry because it just felt a bit more broader and I could pick and choose and like find my niche. And I really liked microbiology and I really liked genetics. So I did, I picked modules based on that in my Mm -hmm. second year and in my third year. And I don't know, I've always had like a sort of like a want to help with Alzheimer's. I've had like family members who had Alzheimer's and the mind is so fascinating yeah. um, the olfactory system is something I still like get Use to day to day yeah so that's I definitely feel I get to geek out still um, maybe not on the sort of that level um, of academia nowadays but it, it, I do have my my books still my big fat heavy books and I can look up and read about like how the, how the senses work with mm-hmm. different sort of um, stimuli and things like that and it's it's, it's nice it's a great foundation for, yeah you know knowing that the knowledge of beer yeah. and how we experience it is of interest you've yeah. got this interesting place to start from to be able to learn more about it and share that with others as well and, and especially if you have quite a I don't want to say geeky but I, I feel like I'm a geek so it's okay to use the word geeky but if you've got a geeky crowd for a tasting or an event it's really nice to be like okay, let's bring this up a notch and talk about things on a bit of a higher level than very, very layman in terms of like four ingredients and like five flavours. So it's really nice to be able to... Here's the science behind all of this. Here's how it's working as we take this sip. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So coming back into the beer world, outside of your role at Beatniks Republic, this is something you started a few years ago, you are one of the co-founders of the Crafty Beer Girls, which you started with Alex Shaw, who I spoke to on episode two of the podcast. Tell me a little bit more about Crafty Beer Girls, just for people who haven't heard of it, and then how it got started, what your goals are, and where you are now. So Crafty Beer Girls basically happened because Alex and I met, and we got along and realized that the female friends we have tend to always be in beer. Obviously there are some exceptions, but the women I've met through the beer industry have been absolutely phenomenal, uh, really inspiring, um, really intelligent, just really nice people as well. So I've got an amazing support group and it just felt like we should sort of formalize this. And that's basically what happened with Crafty Beer Girl. So we created a Facebook group, which is open to women. That's very encompassing and very inclusive. So very LGBTQ friendly. And then we use that page as a resource and as a safe space. Whereas the Twitter group is more sort of like just lots and lots of beery positivity and knowledge and sometimes having to jump into arguments about sexism and beer, but trying to keep it very positive and encouraging women to whether they want to work in the industry or just support the industry to know that they have a place and they have a um, they have a community, and that's that's basically what Crafty Beer Girls is. It's a huge community. So Facebook has got over a thousand members now. Woohoo! Um, Very exciting. Yes. And and that is partly because earlier uh, this week at the Great British Beer Festival, you were interviewed by the BBC to talk about the Crafty Beer Girls. Yes. And I know as we had spoken, you know, before our chat today, you were saying there was a bit of your interview there, you know, only a bit of it made it in and there was a lot more that was cut out, unfortunately. Yeah. So you've got a platform now. What are some of the things you want to share about women in the industry? How do we welcome more women into the industry? 
what do you want to say to people? So basically what I was talking about on the news, but it didn't actually make up the news, but was about um, trying to instill confidence in women because I think that is what that is one of the main issues is women don't feel confident sometimes to enjoy a beer or to go into a pub or to have a job in the beer industry. They feel like it's a man's place. Mm-hmm. And with Crafty Beer Girls trying to support women through that and just show that you can like we go drinking every month second Wednesday of every month we Mm -hmm. have a meet up around London and they're few further afield now so Manchester do first Monday of the month Reading's gonna have the last Monday uh, last Wednesday of the month and I know there's other groups around the country like Ladies That Beer Liverpool uh, Birmingham Beer Babs Birmingham um, there, there are loads of others, but I won't be able to remember them all. But yeah, there's, so it's just basically having that cohesive women community, knowing that you can have a place in this industry. Yeah, and, um, even if you don't necessarily want to come work in it, you just want to enjoy a beer, but maybe don't have other female friends that do. Yeah. We've created a little, you know, welcoming club for you to come join, Yeah, and it's, you can dip in and dip out as much mm-hmm. as you want. You could post loads of stuff up on the Facebook in terms of events, because you're going to something and want to buddy up, mm-hmm. or you just want to see you know read and see like women doing their thing Mm -hmm. um so that's really good um and I think it's all about you know supporting and appreciating um, and celebrating women in the industry Mm -hmm. in whatever which way they want to be involved because that doesn't happen enough I don't think so it's a really nice sense of community and yeah, um, highlighting that it's a welcoming space and yeah I mean there's so many people that want to join so yeah it was just this week that the a thousand members was hit and that's so incredible yeah so that that's what when people ask me um like what, what about crafty beer girls I'm to explain that I'm one of two co-founders but I'm one of thousand crafty beer girls mm-hmm. and that's that's like the biggest privilege right now yeah well congratulations very exciting news so I want to go back one more time you mentioned you sort of fell in in love with ales when you were at Fuller's had you had any beer drinking experience previously what led you to Fuller's in the first place was that just a job and then on the job you fell in love with beer yeah so the latter um I don't really drink beer I was more I guess I liked spirits I really liked whiskey okay when I did drink and then maybe maybe cidery stuff sugary cidery not good stuff um but so I beer was a whole new world to you then you almost fell into it yeah wow. so I was mainly I was, needed some money mm-hmm. uh, having gone from a amazing salary as a researcher to um moving back to the UK and having no idea what to do I was doing nighttime university at Birkbeck studying archaeology just to keep my brain focused engaged and yeah thinking. yeah and so to like support myself through that I just wanted a nice bar job or like restaurant job and I grew up in Hampstead so it felt you know comfortable working mm-hmm. somewhere there and I really liked the, the the Hollybush pub so it was it was a bit random but looking back it was perfect yeah and look where you are now <laughs> yeah did, did you ever see this as sort of a vision no, for your definitely future definitely not <laughs> but um yeah things happen in funny ways and I'm really happy like I believe in luck and I believe you also make your own luck so I definitely feel very blessed and very happy and lucky, but also confident that I've gotten to where I want to be the way I want it to be. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right. So perfect time for my last question then. What do you enjoy most about being a part of the beer industry? It'd be twinned between the beer and the people. I mean, kind of feel the people who make the beer kind of come out in the beer themselves Mm. and the beer brings people together and it's that sort of cycle and um, that's really, really beautiful and just uh, really lovely to be part part of. I've got so many friends. I could go to a beer festival nationally or internationally and I'll never feel alone. Mm. Like with beer in hand, you can walk up to someone and just, yeah, that's how I've made so many friends. And there's a special place for so, like, so many people. Like lots of my best friends are people I work with or my partner as well. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's been... It's a nice world to be a part of. Definitely. Yeah. And I hope we can we can make more changes to make the world a better place I feel like that's the next thing to make Uh, it even more welcoming and more inclusive yeah and just also just fighting some things like no like sustainability and I think we're getting enough noise and enough of a platform to make some more positive change because Mm. beer is not necessary like you don't need to drink it Mm. but what it brings the spirit industry brings to people's lives I think it's worthwhile you know investing in it and then uh, giving back to the community yeah, so, how yeah. can we make sure we're still doing doing good through yeah. here? Yeah. yeah, definitely. So yeah. 
Well, let's go see more of our beery friends as we head off to the festival now. So thank you very much for your time. No, thank you. Great to see you. Thanks so much for taking the time to chat with me, Natasha. And thanks for all that you do to help make the industry more welcoming through the Crafty Beer Girls. The group has been such an important part of my beery journey here in London, and I'm so grateful for it. And there you have it. We've reached the end of Beer with Nat season two. Thank you all so much for listening. Over the next few weeks and months, my main focus will be on preparing myself for my next big challenge, the Advanced Cicerone exam, which I'm sitting this November. I will be recording new episodes, can't study all the time, so do keep an eye on my social media, at Beer with Nat, for more info on the launch of season three. Until then, thanks again for listening. Chat soon.